Creatine is a very popular dietary supplement, but did you know that there's two impurities that are often found in creatine and you should look out for these? We're talking about diacyandiamide and dihydrotriazine. These are impurities that depending upon where you get your creatine, whether it's manufactured in Germany or manufactured in China, these can end up in your creatine. Now, why does this matter? Because when we take creatine, we're not taking 100 micrograms or one milligram. The minimum effective dose is 2.6 grams, ranging up to up to 20 grams per day, depending upon what you're using creatine for. So for most people, if you're athletic, if you eat an omnivorous style diet, like you have red meat and eggs and seafood and so forth in your diet, you can get away with just having two to five grams of creatine per day, especially around exercise, because when you move your muscle or if you have creatine in the post-exercise window or with a meal, you can absorb and utilize a lot of that creatine and enhance the absorption by about 25%. But if you're taking higher dosages of creatine, such as during social jet lag or sleep deprivation, or you work the night shift, or you're traveling to Europe, or you're trying to offset age-related cognitive decline, for example, or you've been a vegan or vegetarian, and so forth, there you haven't been getting you know, creatine in your diet and you want higher amounts, well, then we need to consider some of the impurities because it turns out that, as I mentioned, there's two commonly found impurities, particularly with creatine that has been manufactured in China. But research actually shows, and I'll share with you from this paper here, common questions and misconceptions of creatine. The investigators say that particularly sources produced, this is creatine sources produced in China, have been found to contain up to 5.4% of diacyandiamide, which is one of the impurities that you really don't want, as well as up to 0.9% of dihydrotriazine and up to 1.3% of creatinine. Now, I know these words sound similar. Creatinine, we often measure this in the blood to reflect kidney function and glomerular filtration and so forth, but creatinine is not the same as creatine. We'll talk a little bit more about um, amino acid and nitrogen balance metabolism a little bit later, but these two compounds, as I mentioned, disyandiamide and dihydrotriazine are impurities that are often found and creatine depending upon where the source comes from. Because in America, we don't make a lot of creatine. A lot of companies that sell creatine raw material are buying the source either made in China or made in Germany. And that's why it's important if you look at creatine and it doesn't say Crea Pure or Crea Vitalis on the label, then it's probably made in China. And as we now know, the diacyandiamide and dihydrotriazine concentrations can be higher as well as higher concentrations of heavy metals like mercury, uh, as well as uh, some of the chemical uh, solvents that can be utilized in the process because uh, the Chinese are doing it different from the Europeans. And uh, this is important because when we think about where the calcium carbide, which is one of the, the rate limiting raw materials to make synthesized creatine in the lab, let me back up here. So creatine is made by mixing calcium carbide from limestone uh, with the amino acid sarcosine. And so this is made in a, in a you know, synth synthetic organic chemistry uh, type process. It's a distillation uh, process. And uh, in Europe, at least, the Germans have a proprietary water washing at the end. So there's no solvents uh, that are being utilized. And we don't really know what's going on uh, in China. But that limestone... Um, is actually a byproduct of the the coal burning uh, process, and so we just we don't know the sourcing of, of what's going on in China. And basically, you know, I have a relationship with one of the raw material suppliers, Allschem Biotech, over in Germany. I've had multiple conversations with these folks and have seen multiple CFAs and have been behind the scenes to learn a little bit more about how this is made and how creatine is made, and have uh, dealt with the raw material in our own manufacturing facility. And I can tell you, this stuff is really, really purified, very clean. Uh, I really like it. And and so that's why I wanted to make this video because I know creatine is super popular. And, you know, if we were talking about, say, vitamin D3, right? When you take vitamin D3, you take, you know, maybe two to 600 micrograms. Like you're not taking a lot of vitamin D. Or let's say you buy vitamin B12. You're taking maybe 1,000 or 2,000 micrograms, right? These are 1,000th of a gram. Whereas in contrast, as I mentioned before, when it comes to creatine, you're taking on the low end, the minimum effective dose is two and a half grams. And when you pair that with electrolytes, that seems to be sufficient for most people. 
all the way up to 20 grams per day. And so if you're getting a creatine that does have impurities, you might be running into potential problems because as I mentioned, you know, there is through the through this synthetic process, there can be mercury and other uh, chemical precursors and contaminants that can be problematic. Now, the one that is most problematic tends to be the uh, dihydrotriazine uh, because it is structurally related to uh, chemical carcinogens. And so the investigators say, for this reason, German source creatine monohydrate has been primarily used in research to establish safety and efficacy and is therefore the recommended source of creatine monohydrate to use in dietary supplements. Now, you might be saying, well, of course, you know, most companies should be using this, right? Well, here's the rub. When you get creatine made, synthesized in China. Now, most of dietary supplements are packaged in the U.S., but you get raw materials you know, for example, from Latin America or from Canada or from Europe or from China or from India, raw materials come from all over the world and the products are packaged here, sold on Amazon or sold on websites and you buy them. So the raw materials made in Germany are considered to be the primary recommended source for consumption as well as research. And that's why companies like Myoscience, we only use the German-made creatine, the micronized version or unmicronized version. But the reason why a lot of people don't do this is because of dollars and cents. The German material costs north of $23 per kilogram, okay? Now, the Chinese material costs only $8 per kilogram. Now, if you think about that, the German material costs two and a half times as much as the material made in China. Now, because most supplement companies, there's about 6,000 supplement companies in the US. There's maybe 100 to 150 manufacturers. So most of these companies are actually marketing companies owned by private equity groups and investors and venture capitalists and hard money lenders and all this stuff they're looking for a return on their investment. So if you have two materials that you can put on the label and say it's five grams of creatine per dose, one costs two and a half times less than the other, you can see why most people are getting the creatine sourced in China and don't really care about the fact that it might contain dihydrotriazine or dicyandiamide or other compounds. They just know that you're gonna take creatine and other people are selling it too, so they're offering it to you as well. But again, because in toxicology, usually the dose makes the poison. If you're doing higher dosages in particular, you should definitely be uh, getting material that has been made, uh, in my opinion, in Germany, uh, because it's super clean. It's some of the purest uh, creatine that you can possibly buy and contains uh, extraordinarily low levels of these impurities, which is what you wanna uh, be looking out for. So uh, very low levels, of uh, these impurities and uh, as I mentioned it's washed with water and so you're not you know getting any uh, you know residual solvents or heavy metals uh, the mercury levels cadmium lead are all extraordinarily low and so I think that is really important uh, to consider so I wanted to share this with you all so that you had a better idea of what's going on when it comes to creatine because I think a lot of people are just buying it and taking super high dosages of it and I just want you to know that this is one of these raw materials that you want to consider where it comes from. So let me know what you think in the comment section below, my friends. I appreciate you for tuning all the way to the very end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some useful nuggets from this. If you did, hit that like button. Be sure to share this with a friend and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.